Hey, it's Todd Newton. Welcome to the Tattoo Traveler. On this episode, you and I are going to explore one of Europe's best kept secrets. I'll give you a hint. It's a city filled with great architecture, museums, galleries, cafes, and chocolate. Oh, velvety, delicious Swiss chocolate. You got it, my friend. Welcome to Geneva, Switzerland. I'm always thrilled to explore new places with you. And Geneva is a city where natural beauty and history collide in perfect harmony. The Swiss are known for many things, pocket knives, exquisite timepieces, of course, and the wonder that is Lake Geneva. The standard of living here in Switzerland is among the highest in the world. Cost of living is as well, but the cleanliness of the air, the safety, the extraordinary health care put the Swiss right at the top of the list as far as life expectancy is concerned. And the shopping, well, Louis Vuitton, Cartier, Dior, only the best of the best for you while here in Geneva. The origins of the city can be traced back as far as pre-Roman times, but its actual establishment as a city is recorded as being in the fourth century AD, making Geneva over 1,700 years old. An interesting fact about Geneva, Switzerland, it is often referred to as the peace capital of the world. Several key treaties and negotiations have been held here, but listen, let's be honest. Few things bring people together quicker and more effectively than chocolate. I had not been off the train for an hour before this delicious piece of warm chocolate lava cake found its way into my gut blending perfectly with that creamy French vanilla ice cream. And we are going to dive deeper, much deeper, into authentic Swiss chocolate later in the video. But I want you to see this. Heavenly, heavenly. And while we're on the topic of heavenly, nestled in the heart of Geneva, just 500 feet from my hotel, beautiful, is a monument that has withstood the test of time. This is St. Pierre Cathedral. It dates back to the 12th century. And whenever I see architecture like this, I ask myself, how did they build it? No computer technology, no phones or email to communicate, to share ideas, to brainstorm designs. It's remarkable. No motorized lifts to take them to the very tip of the towers. St. Pierre Cathedral is open to the public every day. I'm here pretty early in the morning. It's still locked up tight. But from what I'm told, on the inside, the original pulpit is still there for you to see, as are many of the original stained glass windows. This is the original cobblestone courtyard that is now often rented out for concerts. Admission is free, and if you'd like, you can climb to the top of the towers where you will be treated to some pretty breathtaking panoramic views of the city. You'll take in Lake Geneva and on a clear day, be able to see the Swiss Alps with their snow caps out in the distance. And again, St. Pierre Cathedral located right in the heart of Old Town. Something very special about Old Town Geneva and many of the older European cities is the fact that these buildings, apartment buildings, cathedrals, shops, they tell a story. This is where history comes alive on these narrow streets. And every city has a heartbeat, a hub, if you will. And here in Geneva, it is Place du Bourg de Four. This has been the center of the social scene for centuries and the ideal spot to rest my feet with a nice cold Calvinist brewed right here in Geneva with that crisp Alpine spring water, which I'm sure you've noticed is in no short supply here in Geneva, especially when you stumble upon Jet Dieu. Actually, you can't miss it. The fountain is shooting that water over 450 feet into the air at 125 miles per hour. That's 132 gallons of water per second. And if by chance you're wondering just how close to the base of the fountain you can get, Look at my shirt, pretty doggone close. 
It's been in its current location since 1951 and pretty much runs continuously during daylight hours. Nestled in the heart of a city where time seems to stand still is a living timepiece. This is the Geneva Flower Clock, and it was created in 1955 as a symbol of dedication to both the city's watchmakers and to nature itself. The clock face is comprised of around 6,500 plants and shrubs that are changed seasonally, capturing the essence of both precision and beauty. And now, here we go. Lake Geneva. You want to talk wow. It's one of the largest lakes in Europe, and it spills across two countries, France and Switzerland. If you'd like, you can take a ferry across the water from Switzerland to France. It takes about 30 minutes. It's ideal for jet skiing, boating, water sports of all kinds. And the views, second to none. The Swiss Alps, there in the distance. If you were to view Lake Geneva from far up in the sky, you'd see that it's almost the perfect shape of a crescent moon. I can only imagine what that must look like with these deep blue waters and the lush greenery surrounding it. This little one hour boat ride that we took around the lake cost about $18 and was really the highlight of the afternoon. All right, I promised you more chocolate talk and here we go, my friend. Let me just say that the Swiss take their chocolate very seriously. And the craft of creating this delicious delicacy dates back to the 18th century. One of the secrets of the quality of Swiss chocolate lies in the ingredients. More sugar and more milk than we enjoy here in the States. That adds to the velvety goodness. Not to mention the finest cocoa beans sourced from around the world. And pride, a commitment to excellence. And believe it or not, there's even a law that regulates what can be labeled as Swiss chocolate. A lot to choose from in there. So since I love cats and I love chocolate, chocolate cat, tail first. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Now, I don't know how you go from delicious Swiss chocolate to a statue of Frankenstein's monster, but we're just going to dive headfirst into it, okay? The late author Mary Shelley, who wrote Frankenstein, was English. But the story takes place right here in Geneva, Switzerland. And I do mean right here. This statue was placed in Frankenstein Park. And according to the 1818 novel, it was on this spot that the monster went on a rampage and killed his creator's brother. Pretty spooky if you're not expecting it. This, however, is pretty cool. This is the world's largest wooden bench. That's right. It was built in 1767, consists of over 180 boards and stretches 413 feet in length. See, that's what's great about hosting and watching travel shows. You just never know what you're going to see and what you're going to learn. Now, as we begin to wrap up our wonderful adventure here in Geneva, I'd like to go back to food one more time. We mentioned and indulged in delicious Swiss chocolate. Now let's talk cheese, specifically in the form of fondue. This is Café du Soleil, one of the city's oldest restaurants, and fondue is what they do like no one else do. The atmosphere at this 400-year-old establishment is casual and relaxed, but you definitely want to email ahead for a reservation and request a table on their outdoor patio. Then order the fondue. That Swiss melted cheese and wine dish served in a communal pot, heated with the little spirit lamp or candle. Ours kept going out. Then you take that freshly baked French bread, tear it into little pieces, stab it with the elongated fork, dip, 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 and enjoy. I do hope you enjoyed our time here in Geneva, Switzerland. A lot to see, huh? Hey, if you enjoyed this trip, make sure you subscribe to the channel because we have so many great destinations, Paris and London and Edinburgh, Scotland, all over the United States. A lot for you to see, a lot for you to explore. Until we meet again a little further down the road, I'm Todd Newton travel safely.